Fab. So welcome to anyone that's just joined us on Zoom. We're just um, setting up our live stream now. We'll be going live um, in a moment with Mimi Lomax and she's going to be doing a bridal makeup look for autumn winter. So do stay tuned and do stay, um, do send any pictures in as well that you, um, any pictures, any questions that you have for Mimi um, that you'd like her to answer at the end as well. So I think we're now live on Facebook. So hi to everyone that's joining us on Facebook. It's Eleanor here from Professional Beauty. And today we are joined by Mimi Lomax, who is a makeup artist. And she's also speaking at Professional Beauty London as well. And she's going to be demoing an autumn winter bridal look for us today, um, which is perfect for those who've maybe rescheduled their weddings for later in the year. So if you're looking for inspiration, this is going to be really helpful for you. So Mimi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's great to have you here. And um, as I mentioned, if you've got any questions for Mimi, do pop them in either on the Zoom chat box if you're watching there, or if you're on Facebook, you can pop a question in there and we'll put them forward at the end. But without any further ado, I'll now hand over to Mimi. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today in this miserable day in the UK. I hope that it gets better soon. And I'm so excited now that um, weddings can start to take place finally. I have so many weddings that have been rescheduled to next year or to later this year. And if you are doing your own makeup because of lockdown restrictions or just because you want to, I hope that you can um, take some tips from me today. Um, so um, the makeup look that I'm doing, it's uh, very easy. I say foolproof because um, anyone can do, even with no um, experience or with little brushes or makeup. So you can always uh, incorporate this look um, into any face skin, face shape that you have. And also don't think that you need to buy exactly the products that I'm using today uh, to achieve this look. You can just use something similar. I think it's all about application. And um, just try a few times on yourself, take some pictures and see what needs to be changed. And I like to do with my brides all the time is just to uh, do the makeup in the morning, take a picture and then throughout the day so you know where it needs to be changed, but also where it needs more or less as well. So first of all, in and I think in any sort of look if I'm doing a uh, modeling um, makeup or a shoot TV is always starts with the skin and what I like my brides to do is to drink a lot of water and you know I don't drink a lot of water but if I do have a special occasion event I do try to drink more water uh, maybe like two three weeks before the event and exfoliate your skin as well so a good tip is to Perhaps just get a bicarbonate of soda or a little bit of a teaspoon of some lukewarm water and then just very gently scrub your face with it. And um, maybe start with once a week uh, and then build up to three times a week, depending on how your skin copes with it. But it's really nice. I use it myself. And uh, another one that I love, this is, I don't know if you guys heard it, this is called Beauty Pie. Um, and it's glycolic acid and it's just a micro pe peeling pad and then it just really helps to take all the dead skin off um, and I use that uh, on my brides it's not too strong uh, but it's just really nice and it just comes already wet um, so that's what I start with but if you have the time you I'd say maybe have a bath because the water really helps moisturize and hydrate your skin uh, with my brides, I just use a face steam and that really helps circulate the blood flow on your skin and it just makes you nice and plump for the day. Um, something else that people always ask about the skin is if they have to do any facials, maybe try to do a couple of months before just in case you don't like the product that you're using or you break out. Um, but yes, so I'm just going to do what I do on my skin. Uh, so I use the little pad. They also have um, Beauty Pie. They also have the toner, which is really important to take all the dead skin off. I just looked at myself in the screen and it just looks so shiny. Um, oops. Um, so just get it out.
and with eyebrows i haven't touched my eyebrows now for two years um and i know some people do it all the time but i feel like the less i touch the less maintenance i need to do and uh, i also like to use a serum because the serum just penetrates into the skin a little bit more than um moisturizer and then the one i've been using at the moment is this alpha h liquid gold night repair serum even though it says for night i also i use it during the day because my skin is really dehydrated um so what i like to do when you do makeup uh, just really massage it in and i'm quite rough on my own skin um uh, and I don't, know, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got really bad dark circles at the moment. Um, I was really stupid during lockdown and um, I decided to do a peeling at home and I left it for too long. So it burnt a little bit, which is really stupid. Um, but I've been to the dermatologist since and they said time will heal. So I am wishing that that is what's going to happen. So I just like to work on my skin when it's quite like wet because uh, I just feel like the foundation doesn't go on cakey so put the serum on I'm just going to use a eye brightening moisturizer and the trick is not too much not too little because I feel like if you put too much it just goes really quickly but too little I think that's what it tends to look cakey if you don't put enough moisturizer underneath your eyes. This one is a beauty pie as well. And I absolutely love their skincare. Just started to use their makeup range recently. And it's okay, but the skincare, I just love it. There's nothing else that I think is better at the moment. And it's so cheap as well, if you remember. Um, so I'm going to... Some people like to use a primer before or after. This one is really good. This is a Milk Hydro Primer. Um, primer. Uh, and I like it because it's uh, water-based and I feel like when I use on myself or on other people, those silicone ones, I find it really difficult um, to make it look natural without sometimes it just starts peeling and flaking but i really like this one you can use before or after the foundation the, the makeup so i normally just put on my t-zone um because my skin is really dry um and i find it like i don't really need to touch it up too much there you go uh, and i love this one i think you can get it from cool beauty um so for foundation i've been trying this one which is the Beauty Pie one as well. Um, I quite like it because it's quite good coverage. Uh, they don't have a really good range in terms of skin tones. This one, I think, is a light 400 buff. And this um, brush is my Kit Co. And there isn't any other brush range that is better than James's makeup brush. So I'm just doing really soft motions um i haven't put to i haven't even put a whole um pump of foundation i just like to start really gentle and then add and build it up after so i'm not doing really hard just really nice soft circular motions everywhere so yeah, so this foundation is really nice. It's got a little bit of a smell. Um, I think it's like six quid, which is amazing. And I don't know why, but I find like I, my skin gets really bored if I use the same foundation all the time. So I just try, whenever there's something new in the market, I try on myself and then I'll see how it goes to see if I can incorporate that in my kit. Um, the one I normally use on brides is the Shallow Tilbury Magic Foundation. Don't really like the, um, the Hollywood filter one. It's really heavy for me. And the, normally the brides that I do, to see if I can turn the light off a bit, I'm getting blind. Uh, the brides that I do, they like a more natural look. So 
the Hollywood filter one is a bit too much. And I used to use a lot of Bobbi Brown. I just find like their foundation doesn't last as long for weddings and I just get always nervous if I get the pictures from the photographers and it was like, oh, I hope it stayed. And it does, but I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury one. It's just a very um, foolproof foundation. Because the light is so strong on me, it looks like I need more coverage. But if, if I was going out, I would have stopped now, which I will. So as you can see, there's no really much of a technique here. I just put it everywhere and then I just blend it. Just like as a base. And then I will go over with a concealer. And I haven't been putting loads. I've just been doing that. I'll go over with a concealer just where it's needed because I feel like on your wedding day you really need to look the better version of yourself and not someone else. So if you have a really nice skin that you know if people come really close to you it doesn't look like you're wearing loads of makeup you're not going to feel really uncomfortable and then also enough that when you get your pictures taken you look really nice and um, so a little bit more than your normal day makeup, but definitely not as much as you think you need because people say, oh, I hear that when you're doing makeup for weddings, you need more makeup. Yes, but not too much. Um, now I'm going to just put a little bit of concealer and you can use that with your fingers or with your with a brush. If I'm using it on someone else, I use a brush, but on myself, I use a concealer. And this one is a very loved and battered a corrector from uh, Charlotte Tilbury and is a medium honey one and because I have really been silly with my skin I need quite a lot at the moment just to cover the little areas that I hopefully haven't ruined it temporarily damaged um, I looked so bad I just it's a good job it was locked down because there's no way I would have shown my face I researched a lot as well and just didn't work. Um, so try not to drag the concealer or corrector when you're putting it in. I just like tap it. Just dab it in and then I'll just stop when I can see it. And this one, this corrector here is really good because it's got peach, um, it's like, like a peachy pink which is good to just neutralize any colors there. So I always think definitely correct the corrector, correct the color that you need to conceal and then the concealer just brighten up. Um, so because my fingers are really wet, it's kind of like coming off. So I'm just gonna pull with a brush. Just gonna get a little fluffy brush there sometimes it just works better and I feel like if you look down you can see that it's better looking up oh this weather I can hear the rain okay now I'm going to put my favorite concealer which is the NARS Radiant and this one is a tiramisu and it depends really on if I've had enough sleep I don't need this much or uh, sometimes also if I haven't had enough sleep or if I'm really tired I need quite a lot um, of concealer I never had to use that much concealer until this sleep lockdown but so you can either dab it in like that and I don't like it really light on my on me some people prefer it to look a little bit lighter but I just prefer it to look like I haven't got much on and if you are doing it you can do it like if you're just doing like really gentle it's, so you don't move the skin, don't drag it, because then all the work that you've done underneath would have been for no reason if you're dragging everything. 
I always ask my brides, it's, look, it's wet, don't worry, it will dry, don't touch it. If you are going to touch it, dab it in, don't drag. It's just sometimes I think like, it takes an hour for the, all the makeup to settle in in the skin. Uh, so you just need to really to be patient and not uh, touch it so much. Okay, so that's just like a really good base and then where it's needed I would get a concealer and then I use normally the Laura Mercier one and it can just be a little bit of precision concealer so this one it comes in is very well loved as well this is the number three and you can mix I don't know why they just don't put like different colors why you have to mix I don't get it um, and it's just where I need it and I think if you have um, acne or any problematic skin, instead of doing a really heavy foundation everywhere, just do what I'm doing. Just I prefer medium coverage, and then just where you need, you go with a either with a really small brush, for example. Let me just have a look. Oh little small brush like this one and it just go exactly where you need or i like to use a fluffy brush this one is um from my kit co as well and then it just go really gentle just where it's needed i always get a little bit darker around here and i think it's the case for mixed race or Black people, Asian people, that you get a little bit of this. Uh, I think it's hypo megan hypomentation. I don't know how to pronounce it now. It's not hypo. Ah, it's gonna come back to me. Uh, basically, you just need to brighten up this area. So if you are Asian, uh, like from Pakistan or India, I like to use a an orange based concealer around this area to brighten up because if you use too light a concealer if you are dark and then it means that it's going to go all really ashy and you really need just to brighten up your skin instead of lightening so you can see there's a little bit of crease there but i wouldn't worry about that because we can fix that after just let it settle and i'm not using even though i'm putting that quite a lot i'm not using those at times i'm just really gently just blending 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 i don't i think i'm happy with that so base pretty much uh, on and then now before we put anything else I like just to do my eyebrows because I feel like it wakens me up a little bit more so this one is just a glossier boy brow uh, I think it's like a serum or a moisture uh, a thickening sort of agent and I just like to brush it where my hair would normally roll towards because I like it bushy brown but if you don't you just make sure that you don't do it too much so just you know you can spend hours doing your eyebrows obviously we don't have this time today but I just like to make it a little bit more awake there and then let it set there are so many products in the market now that do this sort of things we've got like brows like it's like a um, soap, soap brow. Um, there's gels there, lots and lots of different things. Okay, so I don't do much contouring in terms of Kim Kardashian contouring, but I do like to do a little bit of shading. So I'm just still gonna get uh, the brush that I was using just to go everywhere. And I don't have much of a forehead, so I can't do too much bronzer there. Um, so just trying to find where your bone is and then it will just go underneath a little bit 
I've got concealer there. So if you have put concealer or too much foundation, just be mindful when you're doing it that you don't move your foundation out of place. So you can maybe dab it in like that. I find like if you just look a little bit down like this, you can see a little bit more. And I always like to use um, the cream. This one is a Huda Beauty one, it's a light color in which is really dark already, so don't go mental for it. Um, so just to create a little bit of a shadow and so you don't look really flat. I don't really like my jaws to be too prominent, so I just try to make them a little bit smaller with that. And even if you haven't blended properly, it doesn't matter because then I'll get a clean. So that was a dirty one. I'm going to get a clean one. You can just go all over. There you go. And you, obviously, you can, you can put more and more and more and more and more. Um, which is fine as well if you like it like that but i don't like too much so i'm just going to get this bronzer uh, this is a beauty pie bronzer as well and then i'm just going to get a brush i'm just going to get this another brush actually this is a charlotte silbury brush there i'm just not you don't go for it like if you are brushing the floor you just i just like to tap in and then take some of the excess out and then you just go on top where you've just done your um, cream bronzer and in winter obviously it's cold so the sun is not there so you just need to bear in mind as well if you are getting married in the winter that you don't put too much bronzer on that you look like you've just been on a holiday where unless that's the look that you're going for but just a little bit just to go and get your features right there okay so what I did just a little bit on the forehead underneath my bone cheekbone there a little bit underneath so it's all matched up and now I am going to get a blusher and I normally like to use two blush two blush colors, and depending on what color you you go for your lipstick, try to match that as well. So cool tone or a warm tone. I'm just gonna use one of these, and I'm gonna use this one in the middle as a overall color, and then I'm gonna go everywhere. And even if you don't like blusher, I think it is quite nice to put it on just because it does make it look a little bit more brightly so just like a lighter color everywhere so some people do smile but i find that like if you smile and you stop smiling the blusher goes down as well so i just like to put place the blusher where i want it to look like when i'm not smiling just pretend i am smiling and healthy and fresh um then i like to go for a darker or a pop of color this one is a NARS one called Towers, and I will just get a little bit again and then just, and I can't see myself anymore. So just one second, there you go. Let's see if I can turn the light on because it's dark and raining and you can't see anything. There you go. And I find like blush is always the first thing to go. So I would put a little bit more. I look, look, it looks like I've got a lot on, but when I put powder, it all will go out together. So powder, uh, I've got these two really nice ones, uh, Charlotte Tilbury and uh, Beauty Pie, the Velvetizer. Because I just went mental for a 
beauty pie during lockdown i'm just going to use all of it on myself so again just very gentle also make sure that you have cleaned your brushes because the amount of friends of mine that do their makeup with really dirty brushes and then they're like oh i don't know why you can do your makeup so well well it's because the brushes are not all stuck together with me with foundation um i know it's hygiene as well but it does make makeup look go um go a lot smoother if it is cleaner so i just put powder everywhere it looks a bit looks a little nicer now i haven't put any on my eye yet because i'm just checking if i need any more it looks like it's fine if you do like your concealer to be brighter that's okay you can just get a lighter one so now that everything seems to be a little bit more settled some people like a bit lighter so i would maybe just lighten up the inner corner and maybe under my brow bone just to look a little bit more prominent to your eyebrows so i just use a lighter concealer a lighter foundation that it just makes your eyebrows a little bit nicer um if you do like contouring a lot you can always just um use more i don't so i'm what i normally do i just get a lighter foundation or concealer and i just go underneath instead of getting making myself more bronzed i just go underneath there if you want a, a more prominent and defined contouring so you just go like that i don't normally do my nose but for those who like to do it you, instead of just going everywhere you can just go in the middle there you go i just feel like the more the more um, subtle and all together the makeup looks more natural instead of doing really harsh lines so some people I know that have done, they have got married, they've had to wear a mask. Um, so you might not want to use lipstick or you might want to use lipstick after. There are some brands that um, don't transfer. Uh, I think it's uh, like Kylie Jenner ones or Huda Beauty. Um, so you could, you could wear one of those lipsticks uh, and maybe just add some gloss so it looks a little bit more natural. Um, before we choose the colour, so I would say maybe just go for the eyes because uh, even if you are wearing a mask uh, for some pictures, um, the eyes are the ones that are being looked at more than your lips. Um, so I'm going to use uh, my favourite... Um, favorite favorite palette which is a pat mcgrath one and i think this one is mothership number six and i just absolutely love the colors on that uh, you don't need to use this one i always use these ones on brides but you can use nyx any other ones this is my personal one and as you can see is being destroyed uh, but I love those colours, especially for autumn and winter, because it's just very nice and sultry. So this one is really quick. If you feel like you need to use a primer, please feel free to do so. Um, I don't think we'll have time to do a primer. This is one is just a lip uh, balm. Um, so haven't done my eyebrows, but I think they're nearly dry and in place. It's quite nice. We'll go back on it in a minute. So first of all, I just like to use just a very, this one here, that one, this color here is just like a light to medium brown. And that's just to get the shape back on my eyes. And I like to do with my, obviously with your eyes open, but if you look into the mirror, instead of looking down or uh, doing another, like look into the side, you can see where it, you need to stop. So I know I need to stop here. Don't go up too higher unless you that's what you want to do. 
Um, but then if you look down, you can see exactly where your bone is. So I like to do that. So just get like a nice domed fluffy brush. This one is another my Kiko. Actually, they're all my Kiko. So um, and you just go sweep, sweep across, circling motions out, in, and it just gives you a shape again. And it's so amazing this uh, eyeshadow palette that I've only put in that much. One, two tap, take a little bit of the excess off and you get a lot of color. So I was saying to my friend Kuda at the weekend because she has one of these palettes but she hasn't dared to use it yet. Hi Kuda if you're watching. But she said um, it's really expensive. But then you get a lot of pigments for each of the little uh, palettes, um, which works out actually cheaper, I think, than most brands. So as you can see, I'm just putting across and then I have elongated my eyes a little bit outwards. There you go. And you can do the same thing with another fluffy brush, which is this one here, that's the one I like to use. I'm gonna go with a medium one as well. And it's really good if you've got small eyes like me, instead of smoking on top, because that makes my eyes smaller, I smoke underneath. So, and it's quite good not to do harsh lines because if you cry on your wedding day, it's not obvious that your makeup um, is running or anything like that. Whereas if you do like a really precise lip liner, if you cry and that's it, you're just gonna have to go to the bathroom again and then redo everything and it's just, a nightmare so I'm trying to do my eyes underneath as straight as possible because when you look at pictures on Instagram or Pinterest or films that's like most um, appealing to the eye that, kind, that sort of shape so you can stop here or you can carry on so I've only used one color so far. The look is really good effect already. But I quite like to use the reddish color. You look that one over there. Um, and you can use it underneath, you can use it on top, or you can just use it um, on the side, which is what I'm doing now. Okay, and then you can go, oopsie. If you like to have, to be more precise, there's a really nice little brush there. You can get the darker color and then just pretend it's um, an eyeliner. And if you can hear the rain, it's really nice. It's definitely the weather to have hot chocolate and watch a film. There you are, still a bit straight on my eyes. It's fine from here, but I just need to elongate a little bit more. And um, what I like to do is if you find it hard, you can buy one of those brushes like this and then look into the mirror and then just go and do that. So I'm going to show. But I don't like to elongate it because I want it, us to be really soft. So I'm just going to show you really quickly like this. So this is all um, an eyeshadow, a powder eyeshadow. I haven't used any creams yet. But so let me show. this is a Pat McGrath. Um, liner and instead of going everywhere i'm just going to go really tight the lash line just to mimic there you go and if you've done a mistake if you're really quick you can get a nice smudgy brush Get your darker line uh, eyeshadow and then just go and smudge it. 
And it doesn't need to be these colors, as I said, you can use any color and the effect is the same. If you have a light, a dark and a medium eyeshadow, you can do the same thing. And I'm gonna do on the other side. I don't know if you can see the difference already. I'm gonna As you can see, I've made a mistake. So I'm trying to rush now because I realize I've been talking too much. Um, you can just go and smudge it. Because all you're trying to do here is just create the illusion of thicker lashes. We're not trying to do a cut line or anything. We're just making it. Oh, very nice and blended. Then, if you want it to be a little bit more um, exciting, you can use a really light color and then just put it in the middle with a brush. that you can add glitter with your fingers you know some or the amazing thing is about winter weddings is that can you can really play with colors and um glitter which you wouldn't necessarily do if you were getting married during the summer um just gonna add a little bit more of the burgundy color underneath my eyes. And you can stop there, or if you really want to go for it, um, you can get that again. And then make it really nice and sultry. I'd like to squint my eyes because then I know where I need to stop. And it kind of really goes. And I'm just going to use that lighter one there. And then go in the inner corner. And then my eyebrows. Um, what I'm using at the moment, eyebrows, is this Benefit Precise Brow, and this is number 3.5. We've already brushed the eyebrows, so I'm just going to go and fill the gaps really quickly. You can do your eyebrows in half an hour. I normally don't do anything apart from brush them, brushing them. But I'm just really gentle strokes um, and where just going where your hair normally grows, the same direction. These ones seems to be missing a lot quite a lot of hair because when I was a teenager I used to have really thin brows and some of it doesn't grow anymore. It looks really dark where I am now. Let's see if I can turn the lights on a bit. There you go. And the favorite bit now is mascara. So you can use uh, one of these curlers and um, you go I hope people are not and I normally have to do twice because my I normally don't get all my hair and this is amazing I used to use this when I was at university well 10 years ago and um, I discovered it again this is a beauty pie fiber lash fiber lash building primer and it just feels like my eyelashes Let's go really nice and thick. Um, you can use that or you can obviously some people like to do 
uh, false lashes or LVL. I love LVL because it's just so natural. And if you go on holiday, you don't need to think about not being able to go swimming because your lash is poking or because it might fall because of the water. So I quite like this one. So this one is just to give some fiber to your lashes and make it nice and thick. Um, and then you can just use any waterproof mascara. This one isn't waterproof, but I really wanted to use this Beauty Pie. Why? Massive fan wide mascara. So it just wiggle on it down. But if you don't have that, um, obviously the fiber one, I know, I think you, I, when I was a year, it used to be, I think maybe Rebel. Oh, Revlon, Bourjois, that was the one that I used to use. They have one side was black and the other side was white. And um, my, I forgot to tell you, underneath my eyes, I always used to look, use this Laura Mercier, which is nearly breaking, um, translucent powder, and I just like to use it under my eye there which now is a bit settled. I can just put powder there and put quite a lot. And if you don't want to move it, just roll it like this. And my mascara always seems to smudge. I haven't found a mascara yet that doesn't smudge. So this one is a really good one, which is the MAC Extended Play. And I really like to do underneath. However, I don't have it, but if you have really long lashes instead of i'm just trying to find the brush instead of going like i have and just going everywhere it kind of sometimes makes your eyes droop a little bit so you can take the excess out with your fingers like this or if you get one of these fun brushes this one is from mac and then you just put it there and you try to just use just to go on the root of the lashes. It's quite hard to do that without looking at them in the mirror. Just on the root of the lashes because you just want it there to be dark. But then I don't know if you can see it. This one is going down a bit and this one is just making it that bit there. I do that particularly if people have really long lashes or if you're a little bit older. You just want the definition. If you think like, if you look at Judy, then she always just has it just on the root of the lashes. Um, just going to put a little bit more mascara because I wasn't really keen on this one. This one is my favorite though. It's a Pat McGrath one. And normally I only need to use one coat. And if you think you've done too much, um, you can always go with a spoolie let it uh, dry and then just brush it out so it doesn't look like the old spider web uh, lashes. Um, so I would stop here and then people just choose what lipstick they want. Uh, I'm going to put this one in, which is a Pillow Talk Charlotte Tilbury uh, lipstick, which is very neutral. So you can use this one, I like any lipstick that you're comfortable with. But in the evening, if you like to go a little bit darker, you could either put more things on your lips, uh, sorry, on your eyes, or you can go a little bit extra, use a liner inside, just makes it a little bit more dramatic. This one is only a brown one, it's not, a black one but you could do a black one uh, or you can use underneath a bit more to make it look extra strong but just remember it's a wedding so you don't want to be like going out to makeup um, you just want it to be a little bit more subtle Um I will send to everyone like the products names if you want you can just ask her on the chat and then I will I can send it or I can post it on my Instagram Mimi Lomax. So I'm just thinking I just need a little bit more 
of blusher there and you can use a brown one if you want it really dramatic so this is a lip liner uh, but it's a really nice brown and some people who like it really sultry you can do that and it makes it even more dramatic so it goes from an evening sort of makeup uh, from a more like day makeup into an evening one I'm going back again with that red one and you can just go a little bit more like that and then you can just choose the lipstick that you want to in uh, on the day I'm just trying to see oh, here, there you go. if you wanted a bit of a, a darker lipstick uh, I would go for like a plummy one so let me just find here is um I quite like this rosemary is a this one here and it's a poppy brown one so And I like the black ones actually because it tends to stay a little bit more than other lipsticks. So whenever people ask me for lipstick recommendations, I always say pomegranate, and then I just put a little bit of powder to stay a little bit longer. And to finish, uh, I'm just going to use this fresh glow uh, from Beauty Pie, but Mac uh, Urban Decay do it as well. So it's just going to cover my eyes because I don't. My mascara is not waterproof. And even if you think you've caked it too much, I feel like if you put this, it kind of like all blends in a little bit better. And then um, that's it. And then we just go get my extra fan just to dry it all out. And then that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be here answering your questions now. Amazing, Mimi. Thank you so much. It's such a gorgeous um, bridal look and so many good tips there as well. Um, so as Mimi said, we're moving on to a Q&A section now. So if you have any questions, please do comment. Um, so the first question that we've had, Mimi, is if you have particularly sensitive skin, um, how do you go about exfoliating your client's skin beforehand? Yeah, so there are lots of different uh, products in, in the market that is good for uh, sensitive skin. Uh, even though the bicarbonate of you think this is something very... Um, strong in the skin i find like it's really nice as well even with sensitive skin but if you've got really really sensitive skin i'll probably just get some sugar and honey and then just exfoliate my skin with that because you just need the motion and the little um texture more so than um the product some other people as well have done uh, it's called dermaplaning which is basically a little razor uh, that just gets rid of the dead skin. I haven't got it with me here, but normally it's just like a little razor and then it just comes off. Lots of um, clinics do that, but you can do at home as well. And you need, don't need to worry that it's not going to make any hair grow back. It doesn't actually cut any of your hair. It's just the peach fuzz that people have on the skin. Amazing. And another question that we've had is um, if you have a client who has hyperpigmentation, um, how do you go about doing your contour? Should you be a bit more wary with certain areas? Yeah, hyper or uh, what, which pigmentation? Sorry. Um, yeah, hyperpigmentation. Yes, you need to, yeah, you need to be wary of it. And then, as I said, try one foundation to cover the majority of the face, but then just uh, go with the different types of concealers uh, on, I think I can send some a link, but uh, there are different brands. Mac is a really good for correctors and NYX that will correct the color that you need. So if it is dark, you might need something peach or um, if it is like purple, you need uh, a different color just to correct those colors. So instead of going for something really heavy, just go uh, for lighter things and just, go for concealer just on the areas that are necessary 
but also what is what's really good is uh, using uh, retinol and um, AHAs and th like acids, which is sounds really scary, but um, it will help um, smooth the skin tone a little bit more. Uh, but it's very, very subtle and it's very gradually and then it does work. Brilliant. Um, and another question that we've had is, do you have any tips on how to make sure lip colour stays on all day for the wedding? Well, they don't. <laughs> you could use uh, lipsticks, for example, from those matte ones. They stay all day, but I think it's just they just look really old fashioned. And, you know, in 20 years time, it's not going to look really nice. It looks now really nice, isn't it, when you go on Instagram and you see Kylie Jenner and, you know, really young girls with those matte brown lipsticks. But you, I think it just really ages people. So the trick to do that is use a really good lip liner first. The shallow tuberi ones are really good because they are wax based. And if you put it on before your lipstick, they will last a lot longer. And invest in a really good um, lipstick that's not very, very satin. Uh, but Charlotte Tilbury and Pat McGrath are my favourite ones for weddings. But also uh, another tip is to put one lip, so you just put a lipstick on and then get your um, a tissue, dab it in, put the lipstick on again, get a tissue, dab it in again, because all you want is the pigment. Um, and then put powder. I haven't got a cloth. I haven't got any tissues here with me, but pretending that I did. So if you have your um, tissue there and you get a little bit of powder, dab your lips, put another layer of lipstick and then do that about three times. You can look on YouTube. Uh, that's one of the techniques that Marilyn Moore used to do to make her look, lips really luxurious and plump, and but also for the lipsticks to last a, lot, a long time. But the best tip that I can give you is just to buy a lipstick and keep in the bag and ask your bridesmaid to keep an eye on your lips and um, let you know whenever you need to touch up because really it doesn't stay very long no matter what. Amazing good tips there and another question that we've had um, is from Julia and she said um, I have a, make a wedding makeup to do in November and the client wants full coverage makeup as she says she has scarring um, I haven't done full coverage foundation before. She also wants me to overline her lips. Again, I've not done that before, so I'm a bit nervous. Have you got any recommendations on products to use? Um, not sure what foundation I should get. Okay, so I think it's difficult when people say I want a full face, a uh, full coverage foundation, because sometimes they don't know what they mean. So just make sure when you when you sit down with your client that you're asking the right questions and ask them why do you think you need a full face a full coverage foundation do you normally wear full coverage foundation can i have a look at picture so normally i'll ask can i have a look at pictures of you with makeup on can you show me some references of makeup that you like uh, and then also really align your client's expectations in terms of what looks good on instagram or Pinterest because normally it's filtered so something that's really heavy looks nice when it's being photographed and you know touched up or with a filter but in real life it might not look really nice uh, so what I normally do is okay I'm going to use a medium uh, coverage and then you tell me if that's not enough and I'll perhaps uh, take some pictures with my phone but also with my I think it's the Eli, isn't it? Uh, my professional camera, and then show them. So, okay, what do you, do you think you still want some more? And then, if the client still says yes, and then I would obviously go with what they want. But I just need to make sure that what they think it is full coverage is actually really suitable for their skin, because most of the time, people don't need a full face, a full coverage foundation. Um, they just think they do because they think their face is not really nice and they've got loads of spots and it's very rarely that someone needs full um, coverage foundation but a good one that I would recommend is the Charlotte Silver Magic Cream uh, as a mid and to full a coverage foundation that you can build it up but to something that is really heavy would be um, Creolin uh, 
or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood filter, but just make sure that you use a lot of serum and emollients before because it does dry really quickly. So you need to work with it very, very quickly. Brilliant. Thank you for your question, Julia. Uh, we've already got time for one more question um, and Isabel has asked how do you get into the bridal makeup industry in the UK when you're new in the country? I've been doing makeup in Belgium and also internationally for the past 10 years but I'm not sure where to start from here. Have you got any advice on how to get into the industry? Yeah so I started doing makeup when I worked at Bobby Brown and I used to do a lot of um, teaching brides how to do their own makeup on the day um and you know like Bobby Brown makeup is very natural so uh that's where I started but I found when I left Bobby Brown people wanted lashes and uh which I normally I, I normally always do I forgot to, to show but I normally put individual lashes on people um but I just didn't know how to do it. So I want, I needed to build my portfolio of brides that did look, wanted something different to what Bobby Brown used to do. So I just started to do, I tell people, I'll do your, can I do your wedding next year? Like friends and family. And I just started to get pictures from then. And also, uh, I think it's all before it takes like I think maybe like three to four years to start getting your client base really because if you think weddings are such an important occasion people really want someone that they can trust and normally it's people that have the makeup for other people so it takes a while to build up uh, the, uh, your client base and all your reviews and things like that but um, I find that maybe Facebook, uh, some people have groups of weddings and uh, they might not have a, like a big budget and you might be able to do something that is just going to pay for your costs, but you're not going to make much money, but you will give you the experience. Or sometimes people who have just started like yourselves, uh, I think it's called Time for Print. So you'll get like an up and coming photographer, a bridal designer of dresses and makeup artists and a model so nobody gets paid but then everyone gets something out of it by providing their services and you get the pictures towards the end so at the beginning I did mostly maybe like 60% of my work on this called uh, collaborative photo shoots that gave me the opportunity to build up my portfolio and then show clients that I was able to do bridal makeup and then they could book me and then just from there it's just word of mouth really oh, but answer the question absolutely i think that's all we have time for um for now but thank you so much mimi for joining us and thank you. Um, Mimi will also be speaking at Professional Beauty in um, October um, on the makeup stage. So if you're interested in attending Mimi's talk, um, you can head to Professional Beauty's website and register for your place there. But Mimi, it's been so great having you. Thank you. So Thank much you very much, us. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.